Okay, hello. Yeah. Good evening. Today we are going to start our discussion about microbiology, uh, EMRCS question bank. As we said, it is some sort of facts. We are going to talk about some bacteria, yeah, some viruses, and uh, a few parasites, um, and some criteria about them as well. Uh, as we do every time, uh, one candidate will uh, read the question and then uh, give the answer, and we will discuss together what about the answer and the related questions as well. Okay, so let's start with Dr. Dr. Reda. Okay. Coming in a 43 year old woman who is undergoing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy for uncomplicated biliary colic. 2%, 5%, 15%, 20%, 30%. So laparoscopic cholecystectomy is a kind of um, clean, uh, clean surgery. So it's either 2% or 5%. So I think it's 2%. Okay. For clean contaminated type of surgery. Clean contaminated. Okay. Anyone has different answer or another answer? <clears throat> okay, what type of uh, wounds, surgical wounds, do you know? Uh, clean, clean contaminated, contaminated and dirty wound. For exactly. Life. Okay, so here the answer we are talking about, as you said, it's a clean contaminated wound. Okay. Um, most question you will face here about our surgery, which will be starting from clean. I think it's less than 5%, less than 2% clean wound. Clean contaminated, it's about 5% because there is a risk of bile. I, I, I think everyone knows about what's clean. Clean is a wound you do in the skin and tissue away from the GIT or the oral cavity or the nasal cavity, uh, away from any, um, surface mucus area and this is at least type that's susceptible for infection clean contaminated that this is anyone related to a cavity especially the git or the urinary tract system so there is a possibility of spillage um, during the operation contaminated wound any wound you will open the GIT uh, in purpose, you have to open it. Um, uh, to open the GIT or like uh, um, perforated peptic ulcer, perforated colon, perforated appendix, this is clean, contamin this is contaminated. Uh, sorry? Okay, contaminated operation. There is contamination by uh, the GIT contents of the urinary tract contents. Not so common, but the, the GIT contents is more dirty. This is which will happen in some like wounds and accidents associated with severe contamination. Whatever there is opening of the GIT, like uh, any injury, rupture, colon, perforated colon or, or intestine or something like this. This is dirty wounds. And this is the highest rate of infection. Okay. But here he will ask you about the clean contaminated wounds, especially laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The uh, rate of infection here will be less than 
okay Okay, next question, Dr. Ibtihal. Uh, uh, 60 years old, uh, 68 years old uh, man was poorly controlled uh, diabetes, presence with uh, severe autologia and headaches. On examination, there is granulation tissue within the external determinators. What's the most likely uh, underlying infective agent? Pseudomonas, streptococcus vaginus, staphylococcus aureus, actinomyces. Ectroid fragiles. <coughs> uh, streptococcus by genes. I don't know. I don't what do you expect about this? Okay. I know, I know the answer. Can I answer? Okay. Uh, we just want her, she to try first. And then uh, we'll discuss the answer. So, Dr. Tehal, you, you, you can't guess any answer, yeah? No. Okay. Okay. Dr. Ali? Yeah, it is uh, Cedabonus aeruginosa. Okay. I think we have faced this question, I think, in maybe in uh, um, part related to the unity or hidden neck, something like this. Yeah. This is what's called. It's what is this disease? Malignant hepatitis external. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And it's happening uh, I in think, patients of diabetes. Okay, immune compromised patient or yeah. diabetic patient, old age, severe otology and headache, and some granulation tissue in the external ear. This is what's called external, malignant otitis external. Yeah. And this is caused by pseudomonas. Regenosa. So the monas regenosa. And you will not find this organism again during our study except in this case. Okay. Okay. We have no other diseases or related questions associated with pseudomonas regenosa except malignant otitis externa in immunocompromised or diabetic patient and has severe otalgia and headache. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we are we are talking simple as simple as can as we can. We are not trying to um, expand our uh, questions or our points of talking and side talks just to try to to make. Uh, Just try to make our question as simple as possible, okay? Okay. Okay, next question, Dr. Ali, further. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, 23 years old, um, women admitted, uh, is admitted with sepsis and right loin pain. Uh, she has history of UTI that was treated by GB the course of trimethoprim that was connected uh, commenced uh, 24 hours previously. Which of the organisms listed below is the most likely cause? Uh, Bacteroid fragile, E. coli, Clostridium difficile, Candida albicans, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, um, this is case of um, um, sepsis and right loin pain. Maybe this is acute pyelonephritis, maybe. And um, okay, yeah, I think it is uh, E. coli. Okay, yeah. Any other answer? Okay, E. coli is the most common organism cause urinary tract infection, and also in the GIT. Yeah. So any infection related to the GIT and the related to the GIT or the urinary tract or the biliary tract, E. coli is the most common organism of infection. 
okay? Yeah. yeah. Simple infection. We are not talking about specific infection by specific criteria. But E. coli, if you have acute open sites and you just need to know what is the type of organism, the organism in acute open sites will be most commonly E. coli. Okay. Uh, okay. In bacteria tract infection, most common organism is E. coli. Sometimes salmonella, but it will have a specific criteria, chronic salmonella infection. And we don't have any questions here about, and if he will tell you about some criteria of salmonella infection, like bradycardia, and he has positive stool sample for salmonella and other signs, but here he will take, he will talk directly to you. We don't want to confuse you. He just want you generally to know that E. coli is most common in bilia tract, UTI, and GIT. Okay, next question, Dr. Rada again. Dr. Rada. You have no mic. Dr. Rada, okay. Well, I can't see the screen because my network is so unstable. Now you can see it or not? No. Okay, Dr. Ibtahel, you can start. Okay, a 30 years old aid worker becomes unwell whilst helping at the scene of a recent earthquake. He develops vomiting and soon afterwards uh, a diarrhea that is loose and extremely watery. What's the most likely infective organism? Campylobacter regeni, Vibrio cholera, uh, anterior hemorrhagic E. coli, Cholesteridium perfringens, Cholesteridium botulinum, Vibrio uh, uh, cholera? Exactly. From its name, we have many types of diarrhea we will face during our discussion here. One of them is the watery diarrhea. Very watery, loose, very loose watery diarrhea. And this, I think it's very common about the catastrophe of cholera many years ago. And this a patient get dehydrated within a few hours from vomiting and severe watery diarrhea. And uh, this is the first type of diarrhea we face now. Just if anyone just want to write notes, this is the first type of diarrhea because we will have uh, uh, the diarrhea, bloody diarrhea, and we have other two types of diarrhea, but he's not talking about a specific uh, type of diarrhea, but he will talk about the timing of the diarrhea, but will, it will be normal diarrhea. And we he will ask about other types of organisms that is very common according to the time of the area. Okay, so we'll face four, maybe four to five scenarios about the area. First one is very loose watery diarrhea, and this is specific for the cholera infection. Next question. To read a still not. Okay, Dr. Ali. Yeah, uh, 45 year old man is recovering in hospital following total hip replacement. He develops a profuse and watery diarrhea. Several other patients have been suffering from similar symptoms. Infection with which uh, of the following is the most likely underlying cause? Uh, Clostridia perfringens, Clostridia botulinum, Clostridia, Clostridium uh, difficile, Clostridium mulchi, Clostridium titani. Um, I think this is nosocomial infection. Exactly. And, yeah, and uh, um, perfringism, botulinum, 
I think difficile, I think difficile. Or yeah, most mostly difficile. Yes, I exactly. guess but French is also, but I come I go with the difficile. No, 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 difficile, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Clostridium difficile. Criteria. This is diarrhea, but he will mention the patient is post-operatively or after a course of antibiotic, or mm -hmm. he is in hospital and many patients as well suffering the same problem. Yeah. Again, Clostridium difficile diarrhea is a nosocomial infection related to a course of antibiotic, post-operative infection, or in hospital, many cases in the world in the world have the same problem. That is, it is easily transmitted from one patient to another one. Okay. Yeah. So this is the next type of uh, the second type of diarrhea we'll mention. But he is asking about another criteria away from the criteria of the diarrhea itself. Next question. Trip the head. Dr. Gada, when you are ready, you can join us. A 28 years old chef present to the medical team with profuse bloody diarrhea. On further questioning, that he describes tenesmus. They arrange a sigmoidoscopy which reveals necrosis and ulceration of the descending colon. Mucosa, what's the most likely cause? Okay, infection with anterior invasive E. coli. Okay. Or uh, it can be a factor? I don't know. Why you change your answer? Uh, uh, I think uh, Campylobacter is one of the... Um, uh, no, no, another criteria, Campylobacter. Campylobacter okay. don't make a bloody diarrhea. And this mm -hmm. material invasive, E. coli. Yes, your answer is right. Uh, there is two types of E. coli. One of them, uh, which is the enteral invasive that releases enterotoxin, causes this criteria. Uh, of the colon by ulceration and this criteria of ulceration and uh, bloody diarrhea. Okay, so it is infection with enteral invasive E. coli. I think we have, okay, another one. Okay. I think we have uh, some data about E. coli. We'll face the next questions. Okay. Rally. Um, what, what is the likely risk of surgical wound infection in 23 years old male undergoing N selective inguinal hernia repair? Um, this is a clean wound, uh, inguinal hernia repair, and Actually, I hate the red percent, but <laughs> I have to guess. So, you know, five and uh, let's turn to between 10 and 15, more than 25. Mm. This is what type of wound? This is what type of surgical wound? It is a clean wound. Clean wound. Okay, we talked before about a clean contaminated wound. Yeah, it is less and than we 5%. Choose, we choose 5%. What do you expect for inguinal hernia? I think it is less than 5%. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's clear because he didn't mention exactly what is a clean wound, but the clean wound may be 2 3% mm -hmm. or something like this. Clean contaminated, it's around 5%. Yeah. By the way, maximum dirty, dirty wound, it will be 35%. This is the maximum percent we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question. 
دكتور دكتور غادر يد دكتور ابتهال anyone wants to participate can raise hand and we can be included in our uh, schedule okay Dr. Bdar, start. Uh, a 34 uh, years old homosexual is admitted to the, with diarrhea of three months of duration. He is found to be HIV positive with a CD4 count uh, less than 50. Uh, which of the organism listed below is most likely to be responsible? Adenovirus or any virus? Or cryptos pretty? Adenovirus. Which are you positive? Which organism listed below is most likely? Okay. All your friends are gathering to a cryptos Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cryptosporidium is the organism that causes diarrhea in immunocompromised patient or post-transplant patient. Okay, immunocompromised patient like HIV patient. Okay, and patients receiving immunocompromised drugs or suppressive drugs like uh, corticosteroids or um, any other chemotherapy, other yeah. types, they are susceptible for cryptosporidium as the most common type of diarrhea for these persons, especially also those with post transplantation who are on immunosuppressive drugs. Okay, so here. Okay, um, I'm just talking, Dr. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, about what we will face in our um, discussion because we already have not uh, no few any. We have so many organisms to talk about, so I just don't want to confuse our friends about other types of bacteria or organisms that we will not face in our discussion. So simple, he wants to to know about cryptosporidium as it is the most common type of bacteria. So here he's talking about the situation. He is not talking about the diarrhea itself. He's talking about the patient criteria. And through the patient criteria, you will go for the type of bacteria. Immunocompromised patient, cryptosporidium. Okay. Post-operative or post-antibiotic or nosocomial, it will be. Who's me? Huh? Prostridium difficile. Prostridium difficile. Okay. Bloody diarrhea. Interior invasive. E. coli. Okay. We will revise all of them together till we know them at the end of our discussion. Okay, next question. Oh, Dr. Idugo, he wants to share. Okay, you can. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, let me read. Okay. A 62 year old lady is unwell following a difficult acute cholecystectomy for acute cholecystitis. Her gallbladder spills stones intraoperatively, and she has been on ciproplosacy intravenously for, for this for the past four days. She now has colically abdominal pain and profuse fast smelling diarrhea. Which of, this, which of the organisms below is likely to account for this illness? E. coli, clostridium, clostridial deficit, clostridial perfringes, clostridial and um, Campylobacter, I think Clostridium deficit. Uh, okay, so what is the criteria? I think for, it's been on antibiotics 
for four days. And um, it's one of those organisms that um, is common in patients that have been on antibiotics. I don't know if I'm right in that. But here he is talking about some criteria, mm. about some criteria of the diarrhea. Okay, yeah, uh, fast smelling. Uh, I'll go close with open fridges. Any other answer? Anyone has any different answer? Dr. Ali C. I, I think uh, better fringes because of foul smell. Smelling. Clostridium difficile. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I got it the first time then. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. He, uh, as I said many times before in, um, uh, in MRCS and MRCS in general, uh, they are really so simple and they are not confusing. If they are talking about some criteria, they will go for this criteria, even there are some exceptions, but he don't want to confu confuse you. What he wants, he wants a simple doctor know the basics, the basic science, okay? Exceptions, you will learn it and you will know it by practice and by, um, by repetition, okay? We rarely, I, I'll not say completely, but you rarely find like um, confusing questions that's hard. They sometimes put it in the exam just to um, uh, make difference between those who will get high marks and those who will get less marks, okay? But here, talking about post and post-operative, okay? Uh, patient received antibiotic for four days and then have some sort of diarrhea. What is it? Clostridium difficile. Okay, post-operative, post-antibiotic, nosocomial, many cases in the world, it will be Clostridium difficile. Okay. <laughs> Next, Dr. Ali, get for them. Yeah, um, 68 year old man with the diabetes present with an area of necrosis of the perineum at the base of the scrotum. There is some surrounding erythema. Uh, he's systemically unwell and hypertensive. Which of the following organisms is likely to be accountable? Okay, it was diabetes with necrosis of the brain you know, and the scrotum. Mm, so, redeem is systemically unwell and hypotensive. Um, sepsis, so you have, you have shock and sepsis because of infection. What is your diagnosis here? Okay, Clostridia titani, uh, Staphylococcal epidermis, and Streptococcal viridens, Bacteroid, and Staphylococcal sabrophyticus, Streptococcal viridens, and Bacteroid. Uh, e. coli and bacteroid. Mm. Uh, the, uh, yeah, Fornier gangrene, Clostridia titani. I think a Clostridium titani. It is the. Clostridium titani? Because uh, titan is not, uh, 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 not sorry, gangrene. Uh, so, 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 no, 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 this one. Um, Streptococcal, Staphylococcal, Dermidus, Streptococcal, Dermidus. Right, and streptococcal, so no, streptococcal, very so. I think streptococcal and bacteroid. Streptococcal, very dense, and bacteroid. Very dense? Yeah. No. And, and bacteroid. No. Let us see the answers. E, E, B. E. E. coli and bacteroid? Is it B? Okay, I know, I know, Doctor Edugo. I uh, I know the answer, but I just waiting for this question. Everyone, mm. he will answer wrong, and then he will see the answer. He will never forget it. Okay, this what's called necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, yeah. This case is a case of necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis. So when it comes in the trunk, 
It is called Mirinia. Impirinia. Necrotizing. Impirinia. It's called Fornay. Yeah, Fornay gangrene. Yeah, Fornay gangrene. And in the body or the trunk, it's called Milini. Milanese gangrene. Milanese gangrene or Milani gangrene. Okay. Yeah. The uh, organisms causing necrotizing fasciitis is mostly multi-microbial, aerobic and anaerobic. Okay. Yeah. So he talking here about the idea about aerobic and anaerobic and mixed infection. By the way, streptococcus is the most common organism you will um, find in any mixed infection causing necrotizing fasciitis. But here he's talking about viridens, some types of saprophyticus and bacteroids. You're talking about aerobic organisms and viridens and epidermidis. We have specific infections for everyone. So the most common you will find in the um, uh, in the necrotizing fasciitis is streptococcus, E. coli, and bacteroids. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so if you want the most suitable answer here, it will be the E. coli and bacteroids. Okay. Yeah. He it is a multifactorial, but he is he here is E. coli and bacteroids are the most common isolated organisms, but streptococcus are the most common, by the way. Okay, streptococcus yeah. pyogenes, I think even streptococcus pyogenes is the most common you will isolate from this infection together with the E. coli. E. coli. Okay. And the infection is mixed infection by multi, uh, multiple organisms, aerobic and anaerobic as well. So here, for Negan Green, most common will be E. coli and bacteroids. Uh, Clostridium tetany will cause tetanus, and we don't have any question here about tetanus till now. Staph epidermidis. Staph epidermidis is the most common organism you will find with any instrumentation or plastic processes. Again, Staphylococcus epidermidis. You will find it associated with any instrumentation like uh, uh, cystoscopy or any plastic instrument go for um, uh, like a caster, cardiac caster or something like this or even for dialysis. These casters, any plastic caster or even any plastic processes in the body, staph epidermidis will be the most common like you are doing a urinary caster for a long time and you have an infection. The most common isolated organism, it will be staph epidermis. Streptococcus viridens, just put it in your mind. This is the most common organism you will isolate from any diseased heart valve. Okay, or congenitally um, have any heart valve with congenital problem. Okay, congenital problem or these heart valves Streptococcus viridans will be associated with the most common infection, and this is what will cause the vegetation, the vegetative plaques, and the uh, rheumatic heart will be Streptococcus viridans, the most common associated organism. Okay. Okay. This is according to this organism because we will face many questions today, but here. Necrotizing fasciitis for knee gangrene or melanie. Melanie gangrene, you will find the E. coli bacteroids are the most common isolated organism in this case. Here is talking about necrotizing fasciitis. 
okay? Necrotizing fascia is gangrene for knee gangrene. For knee gangrene is for the perineum. Mere knee gangrene is similar, but it's for um, in the trunk mainly. It is not written here. Here is also streptococcus and the necrotizing fascia. Streptococcus is the commonest organism isolated by sojin and infection and necrotizing fascia. Clear? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, next question. Dr. Tehel. Dr. Gada back or still not? I think she has a... Okay, Dr. Tehel. Okay, uh, 53 years old man uh, presents with an ulcerated nest at the inner verge. The biopsy is taken uh, and the his Pathology uh, demonstrates as a squamous cell carcinoma. Infection with which of the viruses below um, is most likely to have contributed to the development of the condition. Uh, human uh, papilloma virus uh, 16. Human papilloma virus 16. And the other one is? What? Two, two human papilloma virus are very common for this cause. I don't remember actually. Okay, 16 and 18. Okay. 16 and 18. Okay, so here human papilloma virus 16 is the most common associated organism or virus with cancer of the inner verge. Okay, let's oh. concentrate here because this is a very, very, very important table. Everyone uh, concentrating? Okay. Christian bio virus, EBV virus, EB virus, is associated with the following cancers. Put in your mind, okay. Um, the most common uh, questions will come. Nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. It's a very repeated question, even in recalls. Nasal pharyngeal carcinoma is associated by Abyssinian bar virus, followed by Hodgkin lymphoma and Burkitt's lymphoma, and sometimes post transplant lymphoma. Okay, so three types of lymphoma, Burkitt's lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, post-transplant lymphoma, and one type of carcinoma, of, as, which is the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Okay, clear. Do you remember what, what is the most common virus causing infection post-transplant from our previous discussion? So you don't remember? It. Okay, and cytomegalovirus, this is Abyssinian bar virus. Okay, we said cytomegalovirus before six months and Abyssinian bar virus before after six to nine months. That's why post transplant lymphoma is caused mainly many months later after infection with Abyssinian bar virus. So you can remember it with post-transplant lymphoma because Abyssinian bar virus happens from six to nine months or after one year from transplantation. The next one is the human papilloma virus, 16 and 18. You never, sometimes he gave you 16, sometimes he if you're 18, he will not write post 16 and 18. Okay. All perineal, all perineal cancers in the perineum, vulval, 
cervical, anal, and penile cancers caused by human papilloma, most commonly, most commonly by human papilloma virus 16 and 18. I'm sorry, not caused by, but, but human papilloma virus causes this cancer sometimes, okay? Plus oropharyngeal cancer. Okay, so four orifices down in the perineum and just one orifice up oropharyngeal cancer. Don't confuse nasopharyngeal, Epstein Barr virus, oropharyngeal, human papilloma virus. Okay, human herpes virus eight, Kaposi sarcoma. So eight. It will be associated with Kaposi sarcoma. Hepatitis B and C share together hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatitis B and C share together hepatocellular carcinoma. And forget about the last one. This is not not common question in exam. Is it clear for all this table? It's very important critical table. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is common. All types of human papilloma virus come in the exam. Hepatocellular carcinoma sometimes. Kaposi sarcoma sometimes. Okay, but the first two are very common in the exam. Christian bar virus, yes, it is infectious mononucleosis. Okay. Okay, next question. Who's there, Doctor? Dr. Ali? Yeah. Or Dr. Idugo, maybe Dr. Ali, then Dr. Idugo. Uh, yeah, okay. 58-year-old uh, man undergo, undergoes a difficult colonoscope for assessment of ca cecal cancer. 48 hours after the procedure, he is admitted with septicemia. His abdomen is soft and non-tender. Blood culture grow gram positive cocci. It is the most likely underlying organism. Staphylococcal epidermidis, Streptococcal biogene, Streptococcal bovis, Clostridia difficile, Bacteroid fragilis. Okay, um, colonoscope, first one, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I think Staphylococcal epidermidis. Staphylococcal epidermis. Hello, do you hear me? I don't hear your voice.
Oops. Sorry. Sorry. I, I repeat again. I repeat again. Sorry. Okay. Let's discuss. Stripped cookies. Bovis is the most common for cancer colon. Okay. I, I'm just now clearing about some um, information or some ideas uh, that you will face during our discussion here, not to be confused. We have uh, some organism very common here we will face. First one is Staph philococcus aureus. This will be the most common type in any abscess, skin infection, or surgical site infection. Okay. Any surgical site infection simply happens. Infection, staph aureus will be the most common organism or any abscess in the body, generally. Staphylococcus epidermidis, staph epidermidis, this is a second type of staph, which will happen with any plastic processes or device like urinary caster, like um, uh, uh, CVP, like any plastic processes inside, maybe in the heart, valve, any plastic implant, exactly. Staph epidermidis will be the most common organism. Stripped. We have what's called stripped bovis, and this is associated with cancer colon. Cancer colon infection. And you do a colonoscopy and the patient go to septicemia. Will be associated with stripped bovis. Okay. The other one is stripped variants. And this is associated with heart valves. Diseased or with device. Okay. Any heart, not, not especially in old age. We said any congenitally malformed heart valve will have vegetations. Most common vegetations will, will be streptococcus viridans infection, or patients have processes, heart valve processes. Sometimes it's not plastic, it is metal. It will, you will find the most common infection will be by streptococcus. Just keep, keep it in your mind with the heart valve malformation or congenital malformation or damaged by rheumatoid or uh, rheumatic fever or has a, a heart valve replacement. Okay, the last one is the stripped. Okay, sorry. Stripped, sorry, I just find no space. Stripped pyogen. And this is the most common organism you'll find in cellulites or pharyncle. Okay. Or Quincy. Exactly. Stripped cook. Pyogens. And this is in Quincy, which is a uh, tensellar abscess. So, any cellulites, frankel, or tensellar abscess, you will find streptococcus pyogenes. Okay? And also associated with scarlet fever. Clear. So we have two staff 
and we have three strip strip movies cancer column strip versions heart ball strip pyrenes cellulites and frankel's quincy okay the difference between strip pyrenes and step areas that this is make a localized infection okay but uh, staph aureus makes a localized infection, but streptococcus pyogen, because of the high hyaluronidase enzyme that can uh, uh, catalyze the tissues and uh, cells, cell uh, junctions, so it can spread more subcutaneous to make widespread cellulites, not confine it to specific place, and also Frankels and also associated with Crimsy. Okay. Clear this organism. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. This, yes. this clear. Yes. Okay. Yes. This, okay. Uh, 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 if we face some uh, specific organism related to each other, I, we will clear like this. Just put this this in your mind, the same like uh, the same like what we did for the uh, the viruses. Okay, next question. Okay, let me take the next one. A 20 okay. year old female undergoes a subtotal thyroidectomy. Five days post operatively, the wound becomes erythematous and discharge pus. What is the most likely causative organism? A streptococcus pyogenes. Um, Hemophilus influenza, Pseudomonas originosa, Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, Proteus mirabilis. I'll go with um, um, Staphylococcus aureus. Exactly. I think we just mentioned. Okay. Any yeah. post operative surgical site infection or abscess mostly will be Staph aureus. Okay. Okay, yeah. surgical site infection or abscess, simply staph aureus. Okay, yeah. Next question. Should I take it? Okay. No, Dr. Ibtihar. Okay. Which of the following cancers uh, is not associated with human biloma virus? Uh, tracheal cancer. Okay, so you can remember cancers caused by human papilloma virus. Anal, penile, bulbar, cervical. Or of range. Or of range. Yes. yes, human papilloma virus 16 and 18. <coughs> very important, very important. Okay, next question. Yeah, a uh, 21 year old man is admitted with a crumbly abdominal pain and diarrhea. Uh, he attended a large wedding earlier in the day. Several other guests are also affected with the same illness. Uh, which of the organism is likely to be accountable? Staphylococcal aureus, E. coli, Salmonella, Clostridium perfringes, Combinobacter. Um, 
I think this is um, maybe Fico Oral. Um, several other guests back to the same illness. I'm going with the Salmonella. Salmonella? What's the incubation period of salmonella? Um, I think uh, 14 days. Okay. And when were the wedding? When was the wedding? He attended large wedding earlier in the day. So is it uh, common to have salmonella infection at the same day? Mm, no. No, oh, no, not this one. So I guess, um, I think Clostridium preferences. Okay. And this is a hard question. Abdominal pain and diarrhea. Abdominal pain and diarrhea. Yeah, I, 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 I go with the Clostridium okay. preferences. Clostridium? Yeah. Okay. Sapphorius. Okay, we have two right answers here. Okay, but we will just choose the best answer according to the timing of the diary. Okay. Yeah. Causes that will make the diarrhea or the gastroenteritis at the same day, we have to staph aureus and clostridium perforans. Okay. Yeah. Staph aureus, you will have the gastroenteritis immediately or within one or two hours, couple of hours after food. And this is a very high type and the very fast type of gastroenteritis happening. Okay, so patients or some guests eat some food as they are in the wedding or immediately after going home, they will have severe gastroenteritis. And this is staph aureus because of release of rapid toxins that will cause this problem. Yeah. If he tell you at the end of the day, okay, or after about more than 10, 12 hours, half the day or in the morning and then they are in the night or something like this, it will be clostridium perforans. Okay, immediate yeah. gastroenteritis caused by staph aureus. Later, after one day, it will be caused by clostridium perforans. Clear about these types of yeah. infection. Any party, party with food and some guests and they have gastroenteritis, we have to think about two organisms, staph aureus, Clostridium perforans. You have no other question about salmonella, or just put in your mind that salmonella incubation period from 10 days to two weeks, and then the patient, he will not remind the event even. Okay? Yeah. Clear this point about food poisoning? Yep. Okay. Next question, Dr. Ekdog. Okay, start. Okay. Hello, Dr. Me. Oh, which of the following is not as associated with Epstein Barr virus? Um, a bucket lymphoma, post transplantation lymphoma, Hopkins lymphoma, nosopharyngeal carcinoma, mycosis fungoides. It's mycosis fungoides. Okay, three types of lymphoma Burkitt lymphoma, post transplant, and Hodgkin lymphoma. And the most important is nosopharyngeal carcinoma, all associated with Christian Barr virus. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so I think it's easy now, and we could. Uh, okay, so I, as I told you, the table you have to put in your mind and to know it as by heart. Yeah. Okay. All the disease because he will tell you except of, so you have to know all of them. Yeah. Again. Okay. Next question. Doctor Tehar. A uh, 22 uh, years old man has undergone uh, an inguinal hernia repair. Seven days later, he presents with an erythematous and tender worm that is discharging virulent material with the most likely cause infection with Streptococcus aureus. Is your answer or you are reading the answer? Uh, this is my answer. Okay, exact simply, without confusion, post-operative repair, post-operative surgical site is most commonly by staff or is clear, straightforward. Yeah. Okay, what is the rate of infection here in this Listen. type of uh, operation? Listen, five percent. It's on five percent exactly. Okay, next question. Farali. <clears throat> yeah, an ecosiastic uh, uh, water request farmer is admitted with a protracted history of several abdominal pain, fever, and progressive jaundice. Imaging with ultrasound show mildly dilated bile duct with hyperechoic areas within them. What is the most likely cause? Fasciola hepatica, clone uh, ronchies sinensis, and amoeba histologica viral hepatitis, leptospirosis. Um, several abdominal pain, fever, and jaundice, and abdominal imaging that was essential, mildly dilated by a with hypericoic area. And uh, within them, what is the most likely diagnosis? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I can guess two, um, fasciola hepatica or, um, uh, yeah, yeah, just fasciola hepatica. I'm thinking. What, what's, what's your other uh, doubt? Yeah, intermediate yeah. stratica, maybe. Intermediate stratica, it will block but, and it will be hyperechoic within, within, inside the uh, dilated bile ducts? No, it's far, it's in GIT. Tell me about it. Okay. Fasciola yeah. hepatica is big enough to block yeah. the bile tracts and cause this picture of obstructive jaundice inside the liver and cause dilatation of the bile duct. Bile ducts. So yeah. never, not, uh, not uh, viral hepatitis, nor in hepatitis. Uh, nor chloronic senses, no, this will make dilatation except for fasciola hepatica. It's big enough to obstruct the bile, the main bile ducts. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, next question, Dr. Idol. A 22 year old female is admitted to so ARD. It is plain rupture. She has not been involved in any trauma. What infection can cause spontaneous splenic rupture? Measles, mobs, influenza, Epstein Barr virus, rubella. Oh, I'm not sure, but I'll go with Epstein Barr virus. Russian Bob? Virus? What is the cause here happening? Uh, it can cause lymphoma. Uh, but I'm... Can I answer? Yeah. It's called uh, it causes infectious okay. mycosis. It causes hypersiblinism, siblina migeli. So spleen become fragile and more, more uh, vulnerable to rupture for uh, trivial trauma, for sports, 
So we advise the patient to take care, to take rest for uh, four to six weeks. Uh, if the patient got infection with the infectious ponocleosis, the Epstein Barr virus. Exactly. Epstein Barr virus causes infectious mononucleosis, causes multiple lymphadenopathy plus splenomegaly. You, okay. And one of the most common causes of atraumatic splenic rupture in young patient. Okay. Yes. Atraumatic. Atraumatic splenic rupture in patient. Okay. This is very common question, by the way, in the exam. Uh, and sometimes you find, he will tell you the patient, you, you, you examine his throat, you will find whitish spots and has tonsils. And this is also specific by a Bistambar virus infection or infectious monocleus. Sometimes he tell you this and I think we face this uh, question. I don't, I, I can't remember where exactly, but he will, sometimes he will tell you this patient has, by examination, the oropharynx or the tonsils are covered with whitish material or white spot, and this is infectious mononucleus. Okay, Vistian Barr virus is a very common cause of atraumatic splenic rupture in young age. Very common question in recalls. Next question. A group, of, a group of consultant surgeons are meeting at a sim symbolism. The chef preparing symposium. the symposium. The chef preparing okay. the cannabis has an infection on his finger. Approximately 40 minutes after eating uh, the cannabis, as a group are struck down with severe vomiting. What's the most likely underlying explanation? Presence of enterotoxin with step uh, um, 40 minutes with step urius. Exactly. Exactly. No thinking. Okay. As we accept any group meeting. In group meeting, guests or wedding or party. Sometimes he tell you party, and the guest has immediate, immediate uh, vomiting and gastroenteritis. So this is or gastritis here. Yani it's so early to do enteritis, so it is mainly gastritis and vomiting. It will be caused by staph aureus, okay? Because of anterior tax. If it is late, it will be caused by. Clostridium perfringens. Exactly. Just write these notes, please. Next question. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what is the mechanism of action of microlytes? Um, causes misreading of um, mRNA, mRNA interface with cell wall formation, inhibit DNA synthesis, inhibit RNA synthesis, inhibit protein synthesis. Um, no, to have DNA, RNA. I think um, inhibits uh, protein synthesis. Yeah. Yes, exactly. This pharma question. Yeah. Okay. And you have to know the drugs. Try to know as much, uh, as many as you can of them, uh, or especially the most common of them, because it's Sometimes common question in the exam. Okay, here is this table. I think it's easy to remember. Uh, even before the exam, you have to read it. Okay, very common inhibit the cell wall. We know it, this is the penicillin and cephalosporin, and this is an easy. Okay, this is an easy yeah. mechanism. Penicillin and the cephalosporin, the most earliest antibiotics discovered. Uh, they act on the cell wall of any organism. Okay, let's take it um, um, from down upward. RNA is rifampicin, only rifampicin. 
RNA stem cells is rifampicin, which we use it in um, tuberculosis most commonly. Okay, so we finished cell wall and RNA. DNA senses, okay, are the drugs we use for gastroenteritis in your hospital. Okay, you have a patient, sometimes you use Cepro and metronidazole alternation in alternation. Okay, I think most of us use both drugs, Cepro and metronidazole. Sometimes we use it before, in uh, by the way, about maybe 20 to 25 years earlier before uh, quinolones start to be widespread. The most common drugs used for gastroenteritis uh, in hospitals in, uh, responsible for infection control, they use sulfonamide and trimisoprene or sulfamisoxazole. This was the most common drug they use for um, gastroenteritis sometimes. Okay, sulfa and trimisoprene. And sometimes I think some doctors still now, especially uh, old school, still they use uh, sulfa and trimisoprene in treatment of gastroenteritis or resistant diarrhea. Is it clear? So cell wall is penicillin and phallosporin, RNA rifampicin, DNA drugs we use for gastroenteritis so now and before, which is quinolones and metronidazole, sulfa misoxazole or trimisoprene or uh, sulfonamides and trimisoprene. Okay, then we go for the protein senses uh, drugs, inhibit protein senses, which is aminoglycosides, chloramphenicol, macrolides, tetracycline, and fusidic acid. Okay, most common we use aminoglycosides and uh, macrolides, you will find here the question. The most common question come about this, by the way. And most commonly the macrolides only, even. I think it's easy to know it, okay? Okay. Next question. Dr. Ptahel. A 22 years old lady is breastfeeding her first child. One week postpartum, she presents a tender and irritated mess in the right breast. Infection, uh, infection with which of the following is most likely? Staphylococcus aureus. This is an abscess, breast abscess. Okay, yes. or breast skin infection simply as a staph aureus. Streptopygians, what causes? Cellulitis. Cellulitis. Okay, it is unlocalized skin infection. Cellulites and uh, frankels. Sometimes, sometimes share in necrotizing fasciitis, by the way. Streptococcus pyogenes. Streptobovis. <laughs> And the Quincy as well, yes, exactly. Yeah. Bovis? Um, it's with the colon cancer. Associated with cancer, colon infection. Yeah. Okay. Streptviridens? Heart valve disease. Heart valve. Uh, heart okay. Valve. Okay, let it in your mind associated with heart valve. Okay. Still, we have staph epidermidis. Plastic uh, instruments. Plastic instrument and device. Okay. Next question, Dr. Ali. Yeah. <clears throat> 58 year old man is reviewed in the clinic following successful cadaveric renal transplant the previous year. Uh, he has uh, been able to return to work as a swimming instructor. Over the past week, he reports that he has 
being suffering from recurrent episode of diarrhea. It has made him feel lethargic and exhausted. Stool microscopy show evidence of cyst. What is the most likely source of infection? Uh, and the uh, enteropius vermicularis, clonorichis sinensis, GRDA, scarus lambricoids, and the cryptosporidium. Yeah, mm, he is kind of renal transplant and swimming instructor. Yeah, really, I have two uh, two suggestions: either cryptosporidium or GRDA because of cyst. Okay. Yeah, but I am going with the crypto because of renal transplant and the crypto Post transplant also immunosuppressive patient. Yeah, as we. Perfect. Crypto. Okay. I think simply. Cryptosporidium. Yeah. The most common in immunocompromised patient, right. HIV patient, patient with immunosuppressive drugs, especially post transplant. And it is. Uh, Characterized by cysts in the stool micro in the stool microscope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Simple. So simple. Post transplant patient with diarrhea, crypt spread, and they have cysts. Okay. Next question, Doctor Ido. Yeah. He's twenty-two year old chef. Present with abdominal pain in the right iliac fossa. There is an associated temperature and diarrhea. CT1 takes the patient to tear it up for an appendectomy, or the appendix appears normal. The terminal ileum appears thickening and engorged. Infection with which of this following is most likely? Yes, in Yesina pestis, salmonella, Bible cholera, and pero invasive E. coli. Go with um, entero invasive E. coli. Sorry, I'm thinking of entero invasive E. coli. Entero invasive E. coli. Yes, yeah, so what I'm thinking. So the patient is with right iliac fossa pain, but he is not with bloody diarrhea. He has a uh, calcium temperature and diarrhea. Um, another thing I might think salmonella. Oh, sorry, uh, bloody diarrhea. Let me see. Blood diarrhea, Blood diarrhea is with anterior oh. invasive E. coli. Watery yeah. diarrhea is with vibrio cholera. Uh, salmonella cause um, gastroenteritis after 14 days and it has a different scenario and bradycardia. And, gosh, sure. and uh, some sort of fever okay. for two, three days and it will disappear. Yeah, um, no blood, it didn't. Um, I think of course. Your senior, senior pestis would cause plug. Or plague. Well, they're thinking of acid temperature and diarrhea. So, um... okay, that's yes. Yersinia is mistaken for appendicitis. Here is the answer: is Yersinia enterocolitica. Okay, Yersinia enterocolitica, mimic uh, Crohn's disease and mimic terminal illness. And my makeup insights. Put it in your mind. You have seen it in ticket. Okay. My make yes. terminal iliates in Crohn's disease and both of them my make acute up insights. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So if the patient if the patient is not um, have Crohn's disease or any manifestation of Crohn's disease in the scenario. So it will be your senior in Kerokolitika. Okay.
Okay, this is your scene, your color, gram negative. Cocobacilli, typically would use protracted terminal ileites and my Crohn's disease, differential diagnosis at the top sites. May progress to septicemia and suspected individual in susceptible individuals, usually sensitive to quinolone or tetracycline. We don't care about this except for terminal ileites and lymphadenopathy, mesenteric lymphadenopathy, which mimicron disease and acute appendicitis. Okay. Yeah. Clear? We don't have any other question about your senior anterior colitic except this question. Just put it in your notes to remember. We are talking okay. about facts. Okay? Okay, then. thank you. Yeah. So, no problem, anyone. Uh, answer wrong. We are talking about facts. All this section is facts. Okay. Next question, Dr. Ibtihal. How the following is true regarding the salmonella species? Rose spot appear in all patients with typhoid. These we are normally present in the gut as commensals. Subsequent chronic pillory infection occur in 75% of cases. Relative bradycardia is often seen in typhoid fever. Uh, salmonella typhi can be categorized into the types A, O, B, and C. A relative bradycardia is often seen in typhoid fever. I think I mentioned it in, in my uh, speech many times that one of the organelles or gastroenterites that you'll find the patient have bradycardia. And by the way, it's very common to find it in patient have typhoid fever. You'll find the patient have bradycardia. The fever happened in this patient. Sometimes it's in the first few days and then disappear and the patient may pass for two, three weeks, two, three weeks uh, normal, and then start to feel back pain, um, malaise, weakness, tiredness, and bradycardia, and white-coated tongue sometimes, sometimes diarrhea without fever, and this is characteristic for salmonella. Okay, bradycardia is characteristic for salmonella. Next question. Yeah. Uh, 77 year old female present with non healing ulcer on her right foot. Blood culture grow MRSA, uh, which antibiotic would be considered in addition to vancomycin to cover this? Flucloxacidine, uh, cloxacidine, cetazidine, suprofloxacin, metronidazole, uh, rifampicin. Um, this is uh, thysidine resistance, staph aureus, and fluxacidine, no, cetazidine, no, superfluxacidine, no, metronidine. I think rifadine, yeah, rifampicin. Rifampicin. Yeah. Exactly. Rifampicin so used staph aureus. and staph aureus yeah. in combination, yeah. but vancomycin or thycopalanine is yes. the drug of choice early followed by in, uh, in addition, if you want to add, rifampicin, uh, and lastly, um, linazolid is nowadays, is the most common also used, but used in cautious, uh, without any mis, uh, misuse, because this drug is the best now for any resistant MERS, okay? By the way, Fluxacillin is the drug you use for staph aureus. If you have yeah. a question about staph aureus, the drug of choice is fluxacillin. Okay, for streptococci, the drug of choice is? S uh, as the um, third generation cephalosporin, subtrixone. Penicillin. Yeah. Penicillin. Penicillin. Streptococcus penicillin. Streptococcus penicillin. Staphylococcus fluoxacillin. Okay. Put this in my mind. Okay. Here is some um, some important points about MRSA. Okay. Uh, the best drugs we have to use is the vancomycin. 
vancomycin and ticoplanin. And if the patient is hospitalized, so IV vancomycin will be the best. If the patient is hospitalized and he had MRSA, so, and many patients as well in the world have, so the best will be IV ticoplanin. Other drugs will be rifampicin, macrolide, tetracycline, aminoglycosides, and clindamycin. Okay, other drugs may be used with vancomycin and ticoplanin. One more important point is this how to decolonize a patient, sometimes preoperatively. Patient positive for MRSA by this. Mm -hmm. If nasal, if you make the sample nasal and the patient is a chronic Mepirosin. carrier for nasal MRSA, meprosine 2% three times daily for five days. Okay? Meprosine yeah. mm -hmm. 2% three times daily for five days. If the patient is skin carrier for MRSA, chronic carrier or carrier for MRSA in his skin, so we use chlorhexidine body wash for five days, once daily. Clear? This is important here and in part B, how to decolonize a patient carrier for MRSA and has no symptoms. Meprosine, or the most common brand is Mopirax, maybe, or Bactroban. 2% nasal, three times for five days, or chlorhexidine for skin carriers, once daily for five days. Clear? Very important here and in part B as well. Okay, next question. Who's? Let me take it. 48 okay. year lady undergo an ERCP for jaundice. It is this hours following the procedure. She develops a fever and rigor. A blood kosher is taken. Which of these following organisms is most likely to be kosher? Um, RCP for jaundice, um, following a procedure, um, that's, um, it involves, uh, let me see, Enterobacter, Streptococcus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and, and, and Coca-Cola. Mm. As there's some magnesi that's my and let me just choose one. What is the problem happened for the patient here? Yeah, for this patient, uh, there's instrumentation, um, which I think um, might be an external source, but I'm also thinking of um, gut bacteria, which might also be responsible. Ascend, ascend, ascending cholangitis. Yeah, this is uh, ascending cholangitis with charcot triad. Pain, fever, jaundice, and rigors. I think uh, E. coli, or oh, I'm sitting in of staphylococcus. Staphylococcus? No, no. Inside the GIT and the biliary tract? No, no. E. coli. E. coli, excellent. So this is a transmitted infection from the GIT inside yeah. the, uh, uh, the biliary tract or flaring mm. infection, flaring of infection inside the biliary tree from the ARCP. Yeah. Okay, this is flaring of infection causing ascending cholangitis and charcot triads as well. As we said, E. coli is the most common organism yeah, implicated yeah. in cholangitis yeah. and GIT and, ut and urinary tract. Urinary tract, GIT, biliary tract, 
E. coli. Okay. Yes. Next question, Dr. Pihel. A 72 years old man undergoing a sigmoid colectomy for a diverticular disease. Which of the following intervention uh, is most likely to reduce the risk of developing a postoperative wound infection? Using a plain, clear, incised type drape to cover the operative field, administering mechanical bowel preparation, preoperative, shaving his abdominal wall. One day prior to surgery, administration of single dose of broad spectrum antibiotic prior to procedure. Administration of single dose of broad spectrum antibiotic prior to procedure. Okay, here is the most likely to reduce. This is uh, what type of operation is this? Uh, contaminated. Contaminated. Contaminated operation. Of a diverticular disease. He didn't say um, perforated or something like this. So we can go for um, maybe higher classification. But this is, uh, we are going through the GIT. So it is a diverticular disease. So it is a contaminated operation. In contaminated operation, we uh, used to give one single dose of pro spectrum antibiotic before the procedure, okay? And sometimes we give two more after the procedure. I can't remember clearly, but I think we start one before and two after. In a clean contaminated, we give only one preoperatively only, and we don't repeat it postoperatively. Okay, so this is administration of a single pro spectrum antibiotic prior prior to the procedure. This is one of the most uh, likely procedure to decrease the post-operative wound infection. Next question, doctor. <coughs> yeah. A uh, 22-year-old man present with five-day history of sore throat, malaise and fatigue. On examination, he has large peritonsal and abscess, which is the most likely on underlying infective organism. Fischheim virus, cryptococcal biogenic cytomegalovirus, Morexilla cryptococcal cryptococcal viridans. Um, I'm going with the cryptococcal biogen. Streptococcus biogen? Yeah. So it is... Um, okay, so it is crazy. Yes. 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 Exactly. <coughs> Next question. Which of these following statements relating to osteomyelitis is false? Uh, is the result of hematogenous spread in most cases? Is due to staphylococcus aureus in 50% cases? Should be treated by aggressive surgical debridement initially? Plain Radiograph may be normal in the early stage. The presence of a sedentary joint involvement with internal auto management. Um, I think it's due to staphylococcus aureus in 50% cases. This is false? Yeah. That's all. Okay, so what is the percentage? I think it's um, less than 10%. I'm not sure. Staff Aureus. I think we talk about this in, in also. Most common organism cause of osteomyelitis is a staph aureus. Oh. Okay. Most common organism causing osteomyelitis. It's a very common question in the exam. Osteomyelites, most common organism, number one, staph aureus. Okay. okay. Some information uh, about osteomyelites. Most common organism, staph aureus. Root of infection in pediatric 
and young adults is hematogenous, but in 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 older age and young people and old age mostly will be external exogenous infection. Okay, in the early stages, whatever the uh, problem you have to start with aggressive course of antibiotic and if there is no improvement within 48 hours you have to go for surgical drainage okay yeah okay and the same plain radiographs may be normal in early stages yes and 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 sickle cell disease salmonella is the most common by the way even even in sickle cell disease Staph aureus is the most common. Okay, I'm just I just want to to correct this information. Yes. Okay. Even even with sickle cell disease, still Staph aureus is the most common, the most common. organism infection. But it is highly associated with Salmonella, and in exam he will bring for you Salmonella to put. He wants you to put in your mind that. In sickle cell disease, it is highly associated osteomyelitis with salmonella, transmitted by any way from the patient have uh, any gut problem, has chronic carrier, has diarrhea, has typhoid fever, and through hematogenous uh, uh, root, hematogenous in root, he will this patient will have osteomyelitis. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Clear. Yeah, thank you. Osteomyelitis is treated by aggressive course of antibiotic, which is blocloxacillin, but it will be more IV, okay? Yeah. In the first 48 hours, there is no improvement, okay? Improvement is manifested by decreased pain, decreased swelling, decreased redness. If there is no improvement, you will go for surgical drainage. Yes, Dr. Ibrahim, you are so late. You are so late. If you are ready, you can start to participate with us. Okay, next question. Dr. Tehal. Dr. Gada, going out and in. Many times since she has unstable internet. Okay, if you... If you are ready anytime, you can participate. Okay, Dr. Ptahel, start. Yes, um, uh, 32 years old woman uh, undergoes mastectomy and lattice mastocytic uh, flap reconstruction for breast cancer to provide optimal uh, cosmesis. Um, um, sorry? Uh, Megan, Megan. Megan. Megan uh, implant? Uh, okay, implant? I have a plastic process. A plastic process. Yes. Is placed okay. under the myocutaneous flap. Uh, three weeks post-operatively, the patient contribute to uh, continues to suffer from recurrent wound infections that have uh, proved resistant to multiple courses of antibiotics. Which of the organisms lists uh, below most likely to be responsible? What do you expect? Uh, Staph epidermidis. Yeah. Uh, by yes. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. In the exam, some questions you have to save time for other questions you have to think. Okay. Some questions you don't put 40 seconds or 30 or 60 seconds for every question. Some question will take 16 seconds, others will take five seconds and other will, others will take two minutes. Yes. Okay. But medium, just we say about 40 to 60 seconds for every question. But really some question you have to pass so quickly with your eyes. Yes. This question sometimes repeated by word. Okay, so staph epidermis. Plastic processes, infection, staph epidermis. Okay, um, Dr. Brahim. Okay, Dr. Ali, we can just take Dr. Brahim in our place, yeah. Dr. Okay. Brahim. Okay. Hey, hello, Dr. Rami and hello everyone. Sorry for being late again. Okay. And no uh, a 40, 
48 year old lady is admitted with crampy abdominal pain and diarrhea. She has been unwell for the past uh, 12 hours. In the history, she complains that her milk bottles have been backed repeatedly by birds. She otherwise has, uh, has had no uh, dietary changes. Which of the following is most likely causative organism? Uh, Staph aureus, Campylobacter jejuni, Clostridium difficile, Norovirus, Clostridium botulinum, uh, I think I'm um, between B and uh, C. Uh, which may be uh, infected through birds. Okay. I think okay. B. Yes. Campylobacter yes, jejuni. Exactly. exactly. Campylobacter jejuni is reservoir. Uh, is birds is a reservoir for Campylobacter. And there is nothing here in the scenario that can, can tell us this is staph aureus because um, unwell for past 12 hours. She didn't take any food or something like that except some milk picked repeatedly by birds. And he wants to tell you that birds is a reservoir for Campylobacter. Uh, Clostridium difficile, we are talking about nosocomial infection or or um, or um, severe diarrhea. Norovirus, I don't. Clostridium botulinum, this is toxin. Uh, botulinum toxin, I think this is, uh, uh, will be more severe, prop, more severe diarrhea and uh, general symptoms than uh, Campylobacter jejuni. He just, he, the idea he wants to you to know here is that Campylobacter jejuni is common uh, in a food picked by birds, as birds are a common reservoir for this. Not a very common question, by the way. I didn't see it even in recalls. Okay, next question, Dr. Ali, Fadal. Yeah, 50 year old female with history of rheumatoid uh, present with suspected septic knee joint. Diagnostic exploration is performed and sent to microbiology. Which of the organisms below is the most likely to be responsible? Staphylococcal aureus, Staphylococcal epidermidis, Shrisha coli, Neisseria gonorrhea, Streptococcal pneumonia. Um, I'm going with the Staph aureus. Staph oh, aureus, okay. Yeah. Septic arthritis or any abscess or infection, simply the Staph yeah. aureus and the fruit otherwise. Okay. Next question. Dr. Ridor. A 22 year old man present with crampy abdominal pain, diarrhea, and bloating. He has just returned from holiday in Egypt. He had been swimming in, in the local pool a few weeks ago. He reports that he's opening his door five times a day. His two floats in the toilet water, but there is no blood. What is the most likely cause? A cryptosporidium. Salmonella species, E. coli species, chronic pancreatitis, uh, Guardia lam lambia. You mean the water will go with Guardia lambia? Okay, here is also the idea he wants you to know that Guardia lambia is resistant to colonization of the swimming pools. Yeah. Okay, cryptosporidium, we said this is an immunocompromised patient or, yeah. or immune, uh, patient receiving immunosuppression or, or post-transplant patient or HIV patient. Salmonella species are different, uh, uh, different scenario. E. coli also the same, chronic yeah. pancreatitis. There is nothing in the scenario that can tell us that the patient has chronic pancreatitis. The only thing that he was a local pool for a few weeks, oh, and this yeah. is this is uh, the keyword here, and also the greasy stool. The uh, stool floats in the toilet water because Giardia lambia causes malabsorption yeah. of fat, so it makes this problem. Okay. Yes.
next question. Dr. Idok. A six-year-old boy present with symptoms of recurrent pruritus honey. On examination, there's evidence of a small worm-like structure protruding from the anus. What is the most likely infected organism? Um, Nococcus, gonadosus, enterobios, demicularis, as Ascaris lobricoides, um, colostoma, dodenali, clonosis, sinensis. Um, this is a common type no, of infection in children, by the way. Very common in children. Oh, uh, mm. I know it's, um, I know Ascaris, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, oh. I don't really know this answer, but. Um, okay. Um, anyone know the answer? Terrari, the trip to hell. Yeah. Enterobius. Enterobius. Enterobius vermiculitis. Enterobius. Yeah, this common in Enterobius. Yes. Very common in children. Enterobius vermiculitis. Mm -hmm. You find the patient or the mother bring her child, and she tells you, and mostly they come to the surgical ward. By the way. He have severe anal pain or pruritus, and uh, sometimes he has some dysentery, and the patient mm -hmm. is itching, has itchy anus, and you just when you are examining, you'll find very small white worms, very small white worms moving outside the anal canal. Anal canal. Okay, this is the intravenous vermiculitis. Very common in children, by the way, in low hygienic places. Okay. Okay, about worms, especially at night, yes. It is a uh, night, uh, night uh, uh, worms start to, to get outside the anus at night. Okay. If he told you in his tool analysis that he find only worms only worms in a patient have abdominal pain or diarrhea or sorry or stool abdominal pain or gastroenteritis with stool analysis and you find only worms you are talking Ascaris. about ankylostoma uh -huh. ankylostoma yes. if he told you the stool has worms and eggs he is talking about scaris yes scaris Scaris, lumbricoids. Mm -hmm. If he just tell you the patient has some child with more like structure and rights in eye, this is introbius vermicularis. Again, worm only, ankylostoma uh -huh. or ankylostoma duodenal. Worm and eggs will be scaris, lumbricoids just worms outside the inner canal in a child, it will be introbius vermiculars. Okay? <laughs> okay, next, okay. next question. Dr. Ghada, okay, go. If you're ready. Yes, yes. A 54-year-old female is admitted one week following a cholecystectomy with a profuse diarrhea, apart from a minor intraoperative bile spillage in a care during the removal of the gallbladder, the procedure was uncomplicated. What's the most likely diagnosis? Campylobacter infection, E. coli infection, Clostridium bacteria infection, Salmonella infection, or pelvic abscess? Um, Clostridium difficile infection. Uh, she has a previous surgery and then followed by profuse diarrhea. So, because of a spill, she might have antibiotic. Given so, cross treatment facility is the most likely. Perfect, exactly. Post operative patient, okay, an uncomplicated operation, you will have clostridium difficile infection because uh, you, you give antibiotics and it will disturb the normal uh, internal flora, so the patient will have clostridium difficile infection, okay. Who's there now, okay. Dr. Ali, or I, I can't remember? 
Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, which of the following okay. is not a feature of combinobacter jejuni infection? Um, infection may present in similar manner to acute appendicitis. Biroxial is unusual. They are gram-negative organisms. Infection account for 26% of cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. It is the commonest cause of infective uh, diarrhea arising from non-viral cause. Oh, what is that? <laughs> it's not a feature of combat. Okay, this is the most silliest question you'll find in the exam, by the way. Yeah. Okay, and it is it is not so many, by the way, in the exam. But which one of the right of the following? Which one of the is true? Uh, which one is a feature? And which one is not a feature? <laughs> You have to know this question like this. And so in the exam, you'll find it the same, the same answer, same question with the same order, by the way. Some question yeah. you'll find, and with repetition and with revision, you'll find it is. Pyrexia is unusual, no, pyrexia is usual with Campylobacter jejuni. Okay, similar viral of sites, I think we said about this. They are gram negative organisms, yes. Infection account for 26 cases of Guillain Barre. We don't know, and even I don't know. The commonest cause of infective diarrhea arising from a non viral causes, maybe. But here is the answer is pyrexia is unusual. Just put it in your mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next question, Dr. Idog. Um, a 68 year old woman with previous somatic fever is admitted with pyrexia of unknown origin. Her blood culture are unhelpful, but trans oposophagia echocardiograph will be vegetation on the mitral valve. Infection with polyogenic um, streptococcus geroidine. Perfect, okay. Okay, we'll not discuss this question because now it, I think it's fixed in your mind. Yes most common vegetation on mitral valve or heart valve or uh, congenitally malformed valve, it will be streptococcus breakers. Okay. Next question, Dr. Dr. Brahim. Yes. Okay. A 53 year old woman is diagnosed with cellulitis surrounding here leg ulcer. A swab is taken and oral flux, uh, fluxacillin is started. The following result is obtained. Skin swab, a group A streptococcus. How should the antibiotic therapy be adjusted? Uh, the best, the best antibiotic for streptococcus is penicillin. So okay. and uh, fluxacillin maybe. Fluxacillin for fluxacillin for staff. Yes. For staff, so you can stop or you can. It's better to stop. Better to stop. Okay. Okay. Here is even penicillin is antibiotic of choice. Uh, PNF suggests stopping of fluxacillin if streptococcal infection is confirmed. Okay. As we said, the most common organism causing cellulite is streptococcus and mostly group A streptococci or group A or streptococcus pyogenes. Okay. is group A, most important organism, is streptococcus, pyogenes, and this is one of the best, of the most common causes of cellulites. Okay. Okay, Dr. Reptihel. Which of the following statements related to necrotizing pyogenes is false? Mainly polymicrobial uh, feature may include dirty dish water fluid in the wound. Uh, the presence of crepitus is needed to make the diagnosis. Further surgery is mandatory 24 or 48 hours after initial surgery to review uh, extension of infection. The muscles are relatively spared. Uh, I think the uh, answer is the presence of crepitus is needed to make the diagnosis. Exactly. It is not. It is not a mandatory that you find crepitus. Okay. Uh, uh, to uh, to confirm your diagnosis, crepitus is only in thirty-five percent of cases, 
but others mainly polymicrobial, right? Dirty dishwater fluid is pathognomonic for it. Surgery is mandatory to avoid septicemia and septic shock. Muscles mostly are relatively spared because it is subfacial infection and spread in the facial planes without involving the muscles, okay? Next question, Dr. Gada. Uh, a surgical trainee is incising a groin abscess in an intravenous drug abuser. Unfortunately, the abscess is a false aneurysm and a torrential bleeding ensues. In a panic of situation, the doctor then stabs himself in the finger. It transpires that the patient is a hepatitis B carrier and the doctor is not immunized. Uh, what type of virus is hepatitis B? Double-stranded DNA virus. Yes, it's a double-stranded DNA virus. This is a, uh, the option. Perfect. One of the viruses which is double-stranded DNA is the hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus. Okay. Hepatitis B virus is a double-stranded DNA virus. Okay. Yes. Okay, Dr. Ali, Fadr. Yeah. Uh, what is the most common cause of the amoebic liver abscess? Hydatid cyst, uh, clonor, clonor chaosis, and amoeba histolytica, fasciola hepatica, georgia. Uh, and amoeba histolytica. I think it's some some sort of. Uh, uh, Crazy question, amoebic liver abscess, sure will be in the amoeba histolytica. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's more than easier. Yeah. Okay. Doctor, you do A 23 year old man is readmitted following a difficult appendicectomy. His wound is erythematous and on incision, fast smelling pulses during which of this following organism listed below is responsible? Uh, staff always. Um, difficult appendectomy. Uh, um, this okay, this is the first question. This is the first question you face about difficult appendectomy. So we have um, some sort maybe of spillage or or uh, uh, manipulation of the GIT tract. And the pus is full smelling pus is drained. Oh, okay. Um, fast smelling pus, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of a bacteroides. Bacteroides fragilis. Yes. Okay, bacteroids is commonly present with severe peritoneal infections at this facultatively ana anaerobic and may be present in pus. Okay, it is in normal flora. Yes, uh, by the way, it is, I think, I, I, as I can remember, it is the second most common organism in GIT is bacteroid fragilis. First one is E. coli. Okay. Second one is bacteroid fragilis. Sometimes I think it was in UCMLE question that about the most common organism in orders causing appendicitis. E. coli is the first, bacteroid fragilis is second most common one. Okay, so here we don't have E. coli, so close, so bacteroid fragilis is the most common one. Okay, next question a 72 year old man with peripheral vascular disease develops gangrenous toe. This becomes infected and there is evidence of infection in the surrounding tissues. On clinical palpation, there is crepitus present within the tissues. What is the most likely infective organism? Uh, Cholestridium berfingens uh, D. Exactly. It's gas gangrene. This is gas gangrene and Cholesteridium perfringens is the most common organism here that causes this problem. Next question. Again, start the health. What is the virus is implicated in cervical carcinoma? Uh, human papilloma virus 16. Perfect. What other uh, types 
of uh, cancer caused by this one? Uh, anal, penile, vulva, and meso oropharyngeal. Oropharyngeal. And mesopharyngeal caused by? Epstein Barr virus. Epstein Barr virus. Other uh, cancers caused by Epstein Barr virus. Circus lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma. And um, I don't remember is it post transplant. Post transplant. Okay, I think it's easy now about these viruses. Yes. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Next question, Doctor Gada, further. Uh, a young woman is admitted to the hospital with E. coli uh, O157 after visiting Germany during an outbreak. Uh, which of the following is not true of the condition? It may be complicated by uh, microangiopathic hemolytic uh, anemia. This is true. Adults typically develop hemolytic uremic syndrome. Uh, now, it's for children. It's the most commonly transmitted by consumption of contaminated food, which is by fecal-oral route. Plasmas typically confer antibiotic resistance. I think this is right. Uh, it's a concept about antibiotic resistance uh, related to plasmids. Uh, e. coli okay. is a gram-negative organism, yes. So, not to true, it's B. Adults typically okay. develop hemolytic uremic syndrome. Okay. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is specific for children. For children. By the way, yes. put in your mind that E. coli causes hemolytic uremic syndrome because I think I remember a question in recalls mm -hmm. about hemolytic uremic mm -hmm. syndrome and most common organism is E. coli. Mm -hmm. E. coli, hemolytic uremic syndrome he in children. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next question, Dr. Ali Tvadda. Yeah. Uh, what is the risk of the wound infection in a male and going, undergoing Hartmann procedure for perforated sigmoid uh, diverticular disease? Um, let me see, 35. Yes, exactly. This is a heavily contaminated for a highly contaminated operation and it's up to 35%. 35% rate of infection here. Okay. This question, by the way, come with the same order, with the same percentage and everything. Okay, this question with percentage come typically the same, screenshot. Next question. Dr. Pidot. A 23 year old man returned to the UK from holiday in India. He presents with painless jaundice. On examination, is not deeply jaundiced and there is no organomegaly. What is the most likely cause? Um, hepatitis E infection, hepatitis E infection, malaria, um, Gibbous syndrome. Customs. Um, return to UK for holiday in India. Painless jaundice. On examination, is not deeply jaundice, and there's no organomegaly. Mm. Thinking of um, hepatitis A. Yes, hepatitis A. Exactly. Yes, hepatitis A. Okay, hepatitis. Malaria is not common in not common in India. Gilbert syndrome, there is nothing related in the scenario tell us about Gilbert syndrome. This is about a travel. So we have to relate the question to the answers. Goldstones also the same. No relationship between India and Goldstones. We between hepatitis A and hepatitis A and hepatitis A is very common in India. Uh, because of maybe some sort of low hygiene. Some, sometimes uh, in, in food markets and crowded area and something in, in Egypt and most crowded countries, uh, 
with high population, you will find hepatitis A is very high, by the way. And even if they, it is it is a slight jaundice without any organomegaly, so this is type of hepatitis A infection. Okay, next question, Dr. Ibrahim. A 25-year-old man returns from a backpacking holiday in India. He presents with symptoms of coughing and also of episodic abdominal discomfort. Perianal examination is normal. Stool microscopy demonstrates both worms and eggs with, uh, within the feces. Uh, what is the most likely infective organism? As you explained before, worms plus eggs, then it's Ascaris, Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, Ascaris lumbricoides will be eggs plus worms. Yes. Worms <clears throat> alone, it will be glistoma. Uh, yes. Inner examination, if very inner examination here is say normal, very inner examination you will find worm like structure, so it will be Entrobius. Entrobius. Entrobius vermiculars. Okay. Yes. Next question, Dr. Dr. Pierre, Father. So, what's your statement relating to act? Pinomycosis is false. Uh, they are gram positive for saliva. Uh, they are strict aerobe. Uh, it can uh, be. It may be a cause of chronic multiple abscesses. Abdominal cases may develop uh, in the appendix. Uh, open biopsy uh, of the lesion is the best diagnostic test. Uh, um, open biopsy uh, of the lesion is the best is the best diagnostic test. I think it's false. That's right. Uh, I don't know. Okay, this is a silly question. This is anaerobic. Why not ESB? Anaerobic. Okay, this yeah. is anaerobic organism. The question would come like this, by the way. So mm. Acteromycus is anaerobic organism. Gram-positive anaerobic organism. Okay. Don't don't take about take a biopsy by this diagnostic uh, tests. Uh, abdominal case, yes. Sometimes in appendix you find acteromycosis and may cause chronic multiple abscesses. Yes, may happen. Okay, can you remember what is the feature of the, of the pus coming from actinomycosis? Sulfur granules. Uh, cholesterol. Sulfur granules. Sulfur granules. Sulfur granules. Okay, you have three types of abscesses. You have to differentiate yellow, yellowish, which is common with staph aureus, greenish, which is common with pseudomonas, Pseudomonas. sulfur granules, which is common with actinomycosis. Okay, this is uh, what's your senior pest? Black, ah, black. Uh, you are talking black, black pus? There's no, no black pus. Black pus, maybe? I don't know. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you, can, you may see black pus with the Yersinia pits that's caused a pawn. You, you hear about plague. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Mm. Okay. Maybe because it's most common question or a very common question in part B about color of pus. Yeah. How you know it is yellow and green and sulfur granule. These three is very common in part B as well. Okay, so black with uh, your senior bits, maybe. Maybe you are, or you are right, but uh, I, I, I haven't faced before. Okay, next question. A 22-year-old man presents with a painless penile ulcer and a marked inguinal lymph nodinopathy. Some of exudate from the region is sent for microscopy. Uh, what organism is most likely to be visualized? 
trabalhinho a palida no cardia asteroides, mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium lipoid, and serum gonorrhea. So he has inguinal lymphadenopathy with penile ulcer, which is painless, uh, mostly uh, due to syphilis caused by streptonema pallida. Okay, this streptonema pallida ulcer causes syphilis. Uh, patient with Neisseria yes. gonorrhea will be, uh, this will be presented with mostly with uh, the discharge. Mostly will be ureteral discharge and some history of uh, um, maybe um, unprotected relations and something like this. I think we face a question like this in urology about uh, ureteral discharge. It will be Neisseria or sexually transmitted disease. But here is painless ulcer with lymphadenopathy. It will be syphilitic ulcers, which is treponema pallida. Next question. Chanker, yes, Chan. Dr. Yeah. Ali, what Yeah, 28-year-old uh, <coughs> lady is breastfeeding her first child. She presented with discomfort on the right breast. Clinical examination demonstrate erythema and an area that is fluctuant. Respiration and culture of the fluid is most likely to demonstrate infection with which of the following organism? Uh, Lactobacillus uh, calcii, Staphylococcal aureus, Streptococcal biogen, Staphylococcal epidermidis, Actinomycosis. Uh, discomfort, breast, examination uh, of lymphedema, and fluctuation. So this is maybe abscess. And, yes. and uh, the cause of abscess here is streptococcal biology. Most common cause of abscess? Um, sorry, staphylococcal aureus. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Any abscess, surgical site infection? Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism. Streptopygenes, we said cellulites, and the only abscess is the tonsillar abscess or the quincy. Streptopygenes yep. is the tonsillar abscess or quincy. Yeah. Okay, any abscess is a staph aureus, and most commonly he will give you a breast abscess in lactating woman or something like this. Okay, last question, doctor. A dog. The 27 year old may present to urology for investigation of pyelonephritis. He reports malaise, paresia, lymphadenopathy, and macular rash. The monospot test is negative. Given a history of recent IRA sexual behavior, you are asked to exclude a, uh, a HIV seroconversion in it. What is the most appropriate investigation? Mm. Antibodies to HIV-2, GP-120, polymerase chain reaction, P24 antigen test, CCR5 polymerase chain reaction, antibodies to HIV-1. Um, Okay, it's a difficult question. Uh, you have yeah, it's to a know. difficult, but I, I, I guess that like, GP120 polymerase chain reaction. Uh, polymerase chain reaction? Oh, okay, let's see the chat. That's what I'm just thinking. PCR, yeah. P24, Dr. Mohanad, Dr. Ada C. Okay, exactly. This is the answer is C. P24 antigen test. Okay, and here is. Uh, a brief about HIV, what you do, antibodies to HIV may not be present, so it's PCR and P24 antigens test can confirm the diagnosis. Okay, by the way, this question come like this, P24 antigen test. And I think uh, one of the recalls in uh, April 2019, Okay, P24 antigen test, just know it like this. 
it will come with the same question, with the same order, with the same choice. Okay. Thank you. However, thank you. We finished today our long session. It's more than two and a half hour, I think. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the disc. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just need some refreshment. Uh, microbiology is like pharmacology. Just facts you have to organize and put in your mind. And with a revision two or three times, it will be so easy. And you will just, the question will be uh, just fast to scan. You will have no problem with it, inshallah. Okay. Um, I'll close the record now, not to make it more longer. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much and good night. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Good night.